Welcome to another episode of Real Talk with Real Fit Pros. It's your boy, Jonathan Loudermilk, your host with the most. And as always, I've got my co-pilot, my partner in crime, Mark the Fitness Ninja Zamanoff. And we have a special guest just for the story segment. It's going to be a juicy one. Yeah. By the way, how's it going, buddy? How are you? It's, it's going great, man. It's allergy season now. So I think we've passed summer. We're in the full-blown allergy season in Texas. So if you live in the area uh ragweed is super high so take your claritin take your uh your flonase take your benadryl like whatever take your dog's allergy medication like my dog's itchy as fuck right now so you know it is the season <laughs> hey man you gotta take the good with the bad man i've been waiting four months for this no i know you got your halloween decorations up looking, absolutely looking man awesome. it's basically october basically i mean it, almost basically Cool. Well, as we got with the story kicked off, I'm actually the special guest is actually my wife. And some of you may know her. Um, you know, she's a, the backbone of what we do here at Smart Shark. And the funny thing is, um, she actually spent a very long time being a fitness manager, being a group X district manager. And she started off as a personal trainer, just like me. And that's how we met. So she's got some uh, pretty awesome fitness stories as well. And I've pulled her in here where she's going to share a really cool one from this gym that she ran. Absolutely. Okay. So gather around boys and girls. I have a chilling, <laughs> uh, creepy story for you. And if you don't know, we're on the precipice of October. And so it's time for ghost stories time. Uh, but this isn't about a ghost. Um, this is about something equally as frightening though. So back in uh, April of 2012, when I was the fitness manager at a place called The Rush in Alcoa, Tennessee. Yep. Have you ever heard of that? Nope, you have not. Alcoa, Tennessee. We kept getting complaints from female members about an indecent exposure situation uh, within the co-ed pool area. So if, if, if you've never been to this location, which again, it's Alcoa, Tennessee, so none of you have, um, basically the way this was set up is you had men's locker room, women's locker room, pool area. So there's like a steam room, there's the pool, there's the hot tub and everything. And so people are walking directly out of the locker room to get in there. And so, we, uh, one day, uh, we're walking into work and our operations manager pulled some of us aside and said, I caught him. I caught the pervert. <laughs> and so we go into, um, their office and they've got security cameras, like 24 security cameras throughout the facility. And what do you know on loop is a video of this tiny little old man, totally harmless little old man walking into the pool area completely naked with other people in there women included and getting into the hot tub and <laughs> this guy's not just in the hot tub but naked he's in the hot tub doing the worst kind of swimming uh stroke that you could possibly do do you guys want to guess what swimming stroke he was doing <laughs> the backstroke doggy paddle <laughs> no total taint exposure okay he's doing the breast stroke the one where your legs your legs go out and so that was essentially uh playing on loop in our operations manager's <laughs> office uh all day so i uh got a little bit more than i bargained for that day got to see a little old man's taint um and i hope that that story was enough to kick off a spooky october for you all it was my pleasure all right back to you guys oh my gosh thank you so much yay i think he was just maybe he was washing his butthole who knows uh, i don't know well i will say this so i know also the ethnicity of said man and he probably thought well you're probably not going to see anything anyway so what difference does it make? <laughs> so, if, you're, if you're listening you can just figure that one out for yourself yeah, I don't know why everybody, had, there's always like nakedness and fecal matter and all types of shenanigans that happen in the big box gyms. And that's just one of many chilling tales. Yeah, you know, and I think it, it seems to be, I don't know where it came from, but it seems to be like a rite of passage when you get to be a certain age, you can just blow dry your balls. <laughs> I'm waiting for that age where you just don't care. Like, what yeah. is that? Do we, do, do, is there a training? Is it indoctrination? <laughs> what does that look like where you just just say fuck it and you just don't care anymore you get a card in the mail it's like congratulations yeah 
<laughs> you now know. unlocked all these perks that come with your newfound <laughs> age in life. <laughs> oh shit! All right, well, that was an awesome story. Well, thanks, uh, thanks to your lovely wife for sharing that with us. Appreciate absolutely. that. Absolutely. You know, it's funny. Speaking of uh, ridiculous members, we're going to talk about something pretty controversial today in our industry. And it's actually one of the biggest business tactics that's been used. Once again, me and Mark are obviously going to share our opinion on this, but we're going to talk about, you know, the difference in using challenges to grow your business, whether that's online or in person versus just with some fundamental foundational things that you can do that will serve you years to come. And there's pros and cons to both. And we're going to get into it in this episode. Yeah. And, you know, again, we're, we're speaking from our personal experience and knowing that we, we talked with hundreds and hundreds of coaches who operate in all kinds of different realms. And, you know, part of, part of what John and I are, are trying to do with this is bring integrity to this industry. And it's not that it lacks integrity because there's tons of phenomenal coaches and gyms and programs, but there's also a bunch of creepy, weird, you know, bait and switch bullshit going on that gives the good ones a bad name, just like any other profession, you know, a few, a few rotten apples spoil the bun. So, you know, part of, part of what we want to do is make sure that we're all operating with integrity. We're operating from the, the place that got us in this industry in the first place, which for most of you, isn't money, (laughs) because if it is, you may be in the wrong spot, but it's, but it's to really help and serve people and and to help people reach their goals and live a better life and have longevity and functionality and all that. So, you know, please know that as we, as we talk about this, that our heart is, is in that servant mode. And that's really what we're trying to accomplish here. Yeah. And, you know, what what prompted today's, you know, topic is, you know, I've had a good handful of, of, coaches I've talked to over the last week or two that have told me their horror stories of how they paid their five to six grand for their 12 week, you know, launch program. That's basically using a challenge and maybe moving them to a webinar, or moving them to a consultation. There's, there's different variations, but at the end of the day, it's a challenge is a challenge. And they ended up just falling flat on their face at the end of it. And just being told that their mindset was off. And that's why they failed with it. Where the truth is, they shouldn't have even started going with that tactic because they didn't have any foundational things down right now. If you're at a different level in your business, like Mark, you have a client that is already producing, you know, multiple six figures per year in this training studio and he's running a challenge and that makes sense for him and how you guys have orchestrated and set that up. But in this example of this one person I'm thinking of, this is someone who was brand new, like just got their certification. They're still trying to figure out who their ideal client is, much right. less run a challenge and try to go through, like you talked about these bait and switch tactics that ultimately don't last the long lasting relationships with clients. And you're going to have to keep running those to keep finding new people over and over again. And then there goes the hamster wheel. Yeah. So, you know, let, let's talk about the challenge aspect um, you know, one, the one that I've seen prevalent over the last several years and, and, you know, before we just got on here, I told you, you know, before COVID, I probably saw six gyms in my area alone on my Facebook feed with the same exact ad, the same exact copy of the ad, the same exact stock pictures, all advertising the six week challenge. And we're looking for, you know, X amount of people that want to lose X amount of weight in six weeks, totally free quote unquote. And what this quote unquote free challenge is, was a bait and switch that when people come into the gym, they have to pay, like, I think it was like $500. Yep. And they set goals. And if they hit their goals after those six weeks, then they got their money back. Right. So, you know, money's a great motivator. I understand the, the intent behind it, but when you're telling somebody something's free and it's not free, cause you're still asking them for money. Yeah. Like that's already setting, that's already setting like just, just a bad mindset of where you're trying to come from that you're not confident enough in what you offer to just go, Hey, I know I offer a good product. Come on in. But then the client either consciously or subconsciously is like, well, that didn't feel right. And then they do it, but then they leave. Right. Because it's like, okay, well, if you did that, then what else is, what else is there? What else is behind the curtain? What else are you going to tell me one thing, but it's really something else. 
And in the long term, that's just not a great way to build a relationship and keep a client, you know, forever. Right, right. And then there's the other token too, is like do an actual free challenge, but then you're working on pitching those people and continuing to move forward, which brings in another set of challenges because you just let in a bunch of people into the club for free with no standards, no expectations. And then you're trying to pick people off. And then you're wondering why you're getting frustrated, how these people are not interested and booking a consultation or even going over options moving forward. Cause that's not the intention what they came in. They came in because they think that within this 30, 60 days, they're going to get this thing that they've been looking for. So it's not setting them up for set success. It's not attracting people who are actually looking for the real result and understand that it takes time and effort, which we all know that in this business. And if someone's preaching otherwise, then we know they're full of shit. <laughs> just the truth man that's so true just the truth right it's and so that true. goes back to the bait and switch like are you being up front with people about what they're getting and this is where we got to look at not just making the sale like that's the first part of this you got to look at the actual what does this look like working with this person moving forward is this someone that's going to be in my business for the next six, nine, or 12 months? Or is this someone that they're going to come in once, we're going to do the best we can, and then we're going to part ways, and you got to do it all over again? Yeah, and, you know, so I, I don't run challenges. I never really – I've done internal challenges, but I've never done, you know, challenges to get people in the gym. But one thing that I always tell people, and I, I really believe this helps me set the tone for – great retention is when somebody, even before they sign up, I let them know, Hey, look, you know, you're going to get X, Y, Z as, as part of your membership. And, you know, I give a trial week and we'll talk about that in a minute, but I always tell them, I want you to be comfortable here. I want you to, to be comfortable with me, the environment, the, the other people in the gym, but I fully intend for you to be with me until one of us dies. And, you know, and, and they usually laugh and I laugh, but I'm like, no, I'm, you know, I'm kind of serious. Like I don't train people with the intention of them leaving. And I let them know that before they ever sign anything or pay me any money. So I'm already putting it into their head that this is a long-term relationship and I'm committed to their goal because oftentimes they're kind of committed to their goal. You know, we all know the trepidation that that a new client feels because they've tried several other things. You know, rarely do we get anybody that hasn't done anything ever. You know, they've, they've done a diet or two or a program or two or CrossFit for, you know, two days and they're like, oh, fuck, my body's hurt. Um, but, you know, I, I fully let them know that, look, I am committed to your goal. And it gives them a peace of mind and lets them know, oh, okay, this is, this is a serious and it's professional. It's not, all right, let's, you know, kick your ass for six weeks as much as we can. And then I hope, hope that's good enough. Right, 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 right. You're well, you're talking, the to the, picture. you're talking to the end goal in mind with this. And then you're setting the expectation from the beginning because that is the goal in fitness. It's not about the first sale. It's about doing life together. Ultimately, it was what our goal and what we're doing. And if you're not doing that, you're probably having a rough go at it right now. You should probably revisit some things. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know? So let's get into like the foundational things for the long term, right? Because, you know, if you're going to go and do this whole entrepreneur thing, man, it's a marathon, right? I don't know the exact statistics, but it's like 99% of businesses fail within 10 years and 50% fail within five or whatever the percentages are, but it's not a high success rate. So if knowing that going into it, wouldn't you want to know some foundational long-term things that are going to keep you in the game and keep you growing to the next level? I know that I have, right? So as you start getting in and you're thinking long-term for your business, like the number one thing that I find most surprising with people that have already actually been in business is they don't know who their client is. They go, I can help anyone. I go, I'm sure you can, but <laughs> who, who is it that is that perfect fit that when you meet, you know, it's like, you know, you go on that date and you just know it instantly. Like, Hey, this is this, there's something here, right. That we're going to be able to grow and blossom this relationship, but it starts with getting clear on who the hell you're looking for. And it sounds simple, but it's the truth because you can't find what you aren't clear on what you're looking for. 
And, and more often than not, like attracts like. So, you know, whatever your journey is, A, you got to be willing to share that. We've hammered that home a bajillion times on here about social media and telling your story and letting people know where you came from. But, you know, if you're a parent, you're probably going to attract people with kids. If you're, you know, like our, our friend Kirsten Smith, you know, she's a mom of, I don't know, they got a gaggle of kids. Uh, <laughs> <An army. laughs> Yeah, they're they're building a they're building a football team over there. Nope. Uh, but you know, she knows the struggles of of postpartum, and she knows the struggles of being a busy mom and juggling the kids and being the stay at home mom and all those things. So, who can she speak to the best? Those people. So she goes after those people because when they talk to her, they're like, "Oh, you fucking get it. Like you you actually understand me. You're not you know a 26 year old dude with eight pack abs going, hey." Right. You know, we, we all got the same 24 hours in a day. Fuck you. No, we don't. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, I think that brings up another great point is, you know, when you start thinking about who your ideal client is, you know, it is true. We attract who we are, not what we want. So a lot of times when you start digging into that, well, it's going to force you to ask some questions internally. And, you know, I think what you just brought up, Mark, is a great point with oftentimes we try to serve outside our lane before we're given the opportunity. Prime mm-hmm. example, when I went and got my sports medicine degree, I thought I was going to be training fucking athletes. And I <laughs> did not train athletes. Let's just say that, right? But when you get really clear on, you know, where you're at in life and your story and what your skill sets are and what you're extremely confident in being able to deliver for people, then that's going to point you in the direction of the type of people you need to help. And it's serving on the level that you're on. So in this example with Kirsten, you know, she's got, she lives the, the message in the life of being a busy mom and doing all the things. Well, that's the level she's on. So she's attracting a lot of women that are on that level and she's having great success with it because she's gotten clear on the level that she's supposed to serve on right now. And the cool part with that is, is as you continue to do this thing that we call business and entrepreneurship is you grow the higher levels of influence as you do this. But if you're not willing to help the people that are in front of you right now, you're not going to get the opportunities to help the, the big level clients or the big corporate deal, or whatever your dream is that you're wanting to, to knock down in the future. Well, and when you, when you position yourself as the expert in whatever niche of this business that you operate in, like people will pay. And it's as simple as that. I don't care who you're serving. I don't care what type of population you're serving. When you are the expert, people will seek you out and want to work with you. So I don't care if it's a stay at home mom, like, you know what, they may not have the income, but somebody does. Yeah. You know, and and they're willing to invest in it. So when you show value and you know who you are and who you serve the best, people will show up and you don't have to do six week challenges and bait (laughs) them to get them to come talk to you, you know, because they're just like, oh, you have the solution to my problem. And, you know, there, we can't say this enough. If you have the solution and you can articulate that enough for somebody to believe that you will solve their problem, they will pay you money. Yeah. And I think it comes down to, you know, as you're on your path to becoming the expert, or maybe you already are, something that we, we get tripped, on, tripped up on is we're told not to share what we know because then they won't hire us or they won't need us. And I don't know who started that, but it's a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> right. If you actually help people by helping them first, this weird thing happens where people actually want to do business with you, right? When the value exceeds the cost, that's where you're peaking interest. So if you really want to build a long-term sustainable uh, approach to pulling in the right people, well, you need to put together some value-based things that you can provide up front for them, which then allows you to demonstrate your expertise and it allows you to build rapport with them so that they can get to know, like, and trust you so that you're attracting actually people who are not only a, a great fit for what you do, but they're a great fit with you in terms of the culture of who you are. And every trainer has their own culture. Like Mark, you have your culture at your gym and what you do. Yeah. You know, I have my culture and what I do. Every gym I went to, I had to create my own culture when I was in there. And there'd be some clients that loved it and other people like, Hey, it's not really what I'm looking for, which is totally cool. Go find a better place for you. Cause you're really looking to serve the people that you were put on the surf to do. And that's why getting clear and being able to offer that value up front is a great way to position you long-term as that authority. And as that expert where that you become the go-to as you help enough people get what they want first. Yeah. And you know, most people are praying or praying well they're praying too but you know they're they're paying for accountability 
and they're paying for speed. Mm -hmm. You know, they're compressing time because everything that we teach somebody, you can go find online somewhere. Right. It's no, you know, nobody has the secret to a squat. And if, the, if they do, there's a video on YouTube that's like my seven secrets to squatting or, you know, fuck ever, right? So there's no, you don't have new information. What you have is insight. And when you work with people and they, they come across a, a path where they're like, I don't know what to do now. I've plateaued. This doesn't seem to be working anymore. I'm gaining weight now instead of losing weight. Like, that's what we're here for. We're here to solve those problems. And, you know, when, when they have the, the person to go to and to turn to and to go, hey, I'm struggling, help me. That's what they're paying us for. They're not paying us to learn how to work out. Right. That's literally the easiest component of this whole thing is how do we work out? Again, you know, gyms exist so people can just walk in and go do things, but they don't know what to do. And when they do know what to do, they don't want to do it. Right. <laughs> so, you know, we're the ones that get to hold them accountable. And, and again, it's building that long-term relationship that breeds retention. So you don't have to always search for clients. You know, the goal is every month you should be gaining clients period. And, you know, there's, there's always going to be retention. You're always going to have people drop off due to life circumstances, people move income changes or whatever, but it shouldn't have to be this mad rush, you know, six weeks, 12 weeks at a time, then you're absolutely exhausted. You're putting all this time and energy into these people. And the other part of it is you often end up neglecting the people that were already paying you to begin with. Mm -hmm. So there's danger in being in more of a hole than you even started because the challenge took all this time and energy. The people didn't sign up like they were supposed to. And you pissed off five of your old members because they're like, well, what are, what are we? Like, what happened to the attention we were getting? You know, we were here already. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of, you know, little pieces and components of that that can really, really throw a wrench in the system, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely, man. So if we're recapping this is getting clear on your ideal client. That's number one. We've got resources for that too. We'll make sure we put those in the show notes for you. Um, from there, it's really getting clear on, okay, how do I start establishing, establishing myself as the expert? And the way you do that is you put out content and you put out trainings that are actually going to help add value to people's lives. And this is where, you know, to Mark's point, like you don't own the information. If you're building your business based on you knowing the secret, uh, you're going to have a rough time because there's always going to be somebody that knows the secret. And that's where you see these 997 courses for learning the secret to building a six-figure business in this $1,000 course. And then you go through it and you go, well, that was bullshit. Didn't get anything <laughs> out of that, right? Versus all this stuff is already free. What they're paying for is, like you said, the accountability, as well as the ability to compress time and get them there faster. And when you get clear on that with your ideal client, that's when you can make your, your selling proposition unique and how you uniquely solve that, which is then going to then in turn get them to want to work with you. But these are the long term that you got to focus on is being consistent with sharing your story on social media having these different uh, resources available, how we recommend you start a Facebook group. If you haven't already, that's going to be a game changer for you. We can continue to cultivate that community. And regardless of your situation, where you're at, most likely if you had more leads, you wouldn't care. <laughs> B -b 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 Bingo. You know, and I think we run into that. You, you get a bad batch of prospects and you get people waste your time or you're just yeah. getting rejected and you're questioning like, man, I don't know if this is going to work. And most likely you're just talking to the wrong people. What well, probably has nothing to do with you. Yeah. Um, I, I want to add this about the challenge thing. You know, if, if it's something, because it's still out there, I, see, I still see companies promoting that. Um, you know, if you're looking at that as a way to grow your business, there's, there's a couple of things I want you to think about. Number one, do you have your systems in place? Like you have to have your shit together. You got to know from beginning to end what that client journey looks like from the minute they contact you until the minute they sign up. If there's any chink in the armor there, you're going to fall on your face because mm -hmm. people are going to get lost. Like you're, you're, you're going to pay to do this thing. And then you're going to lose the people that you're trying to get in in the first place. The second thing is it needs to feel good. Like it really does. And if, and if any component of whatever you're being presented doesn't feel right, like your intuition's going, eh, I don't know about this. You know, remember like we, 
we sell the way we buy and we buy the way we sell. And if you're, if you're selling in a, in a weird way or, or a way that doesn't feel authentic to you, like those are the people you're going to attract. You're going to attract the same type of people. You're going to attract the people that sign up and then disappear and cancel their credit card on you. You're going to attract the people that, that, you know, are on the be back bus all the time. They're just on the be back bus. And you're like, but well, they're coming. They're coming. And no, they're on. They're still on the bus. They're circling around. They ain't, they ain't fucking coming back, guys. I'm going to find that bus one day, the mythical <laughs> B-back bus. And it's going to be everyone that ever told me they had to think about it. <laughs> um, but, you know, you, you need to consider those things. And I've seen very, very, very few gyms ever execute that well. Um, I got one buddy of mine that runs a gym here in Carrollton. He actually, I watched him do it well. You know, he had his people in place. He had his systems in place. He knew exactly the play he was trying to run and he served his people. But again, his, his heart was really in the right place. And, you know, he'd been a coach for a really long time. He's still a coach, but, you know, been doing it for a really long time. He knows his business well, so it worked for him. But for the majority of people that are doing those things are doing it out of desperation, not out of, you know, legitimate reason for growth. And anytime you do anything from desperation, right. you're, you're doing That's a great point, man. That's a really great point. Because when now that I think about it, man, I've never seen someone run a challenge that was coming from abundance. Yeah. It's always like, I need this. And they're trying to compress and get as fast as they can. And then it's just messy as yeah. they go through that. Versus them, like, if you would just been doing the hard work, right, from the beginning, you would be reaping the benefit by now. And you wouldn't be needing to run challenges. Yep. Amen to that. Amen. Cool. All right. As always, we hope you got value out of the episode and you enjoy it. And I would encourage you if you are not sure and you're at a crossroads, okay, I'm not sure if I should do a challenge or what is this like building this for me? What does that look like? You know, we offer a customized planning session where we'll map out what we would recommend for you. And we give that to you up front. From there, you can decide what you want to do. So if that's something you're interested in, all you need to do is click the link down below. We'll have that in the show notes where you can fill out an application. It's going to have some short questions just so we have a clear idea of where you're at and where you want to go. So with that being said, uh, Mark, you got any final thoughts for the episode today? No, that's it. But uh, I'm going to steal your line and tell the people, go get what you're worth, baby. Yeah. Damn good. Damn good show.